I'm grateful to have a guest like Paul Barron here, the founder and CEO of the World Printer USA. Welcome, Paul. Antonis, so nice to be with you today. Great to have you with us. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background and who you are? Well, um, as you introduced me, my name is Paul Barron. I'm the founder and CEO of The Wall Printer. That's my current venture. Uh, we're about mm -hmm. five years old, uh, developing yep. and providing a unique printing technology to deliver artwork onto walls. And basically what we do with the machines we manufacture and distribute are uh, put people in business um, throughout the entire Western Hemisphere, also in the UK. Um, and any English speaking uh, areas in the world, Spanish also, and French Canadian too. We have other distributors in various countries throughout the world, uh, but mm -hmm. I primarily, from our US office, support all of our customers. Um, I'm 72 years old, so I'm not going to bore your audience with the entire life story. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the, the main aspect of my entrepreneurial journey is that I've always owned my own business or worked for another company where I could learn what I didn't know and then bring that into businesses that I would yeah. start. I've done things across software development, um, retail yeah. packaged goods, food service, sporting goods, um, various uh, uh, products, uh, primarily products from countries outside the United States that uh, wanted to identify their customers in the United States. And mm -hmm. so I would help them find their customers, find their partners, strategic relationships, help those companies grow. Um, I retired several times over the past 15, 20 years, and I was always drawn back into something that I found that excited me and that I found could be yeah. of value to others. And this right now, the wall printer, I think is one of the most interesting and innovative discoveries of technology that I've made. And we have mm -hmm. over 160 customers now throughout okay. North America, South America. So we're very proud of the growth that we've had. Uh, my company last year was awarded Entrepreneur of the Year uh, by All right. local business journals. And, mm -hmm. uh, very, and the reason they picked our company is not because they're simply entrepreneurs, with um, some type of innovative technology or product. Uh, but every time somebody buys one of our printers, they are creating a business for themselves or adding revenue to their existing business if they happen to be something like painters or artists or uh, yeah. anything that it works with. So anyway, very proud of what we're doing now. I think my customers are becoming successful if they actually use the machines. Uh, which is not a requirement because we're not a franchise system, but we do give exclusive territories to people because mm -hmm. I'd like to avoid people who are willing to take a risk and be the first kid on the block, so to speak, to do something. Right. Um, as I as I always tell people who are entrepreneurial or even customers that are mine, uh, yeah. very often if you think you've got a great idea um, and don't don't even think that you've got a great idea unless it solves some kind of a problem but if you do have a solution to a problem you may very well be in a position to start a product or a service um, that can be the foundation of a successful business but if that's mm -hmm. the case do know as i tell all my customers the good news and bad news is there the good news is you're probably going to be the first one to be doing this the bad yeah. news is you're probably going to be the first one to be doing this so you have to educate mm -hmm. the market let them know what's so valuable and what's so uh, compelling about what it is you do. And that's what yeah. excites me about something innovative, that you can actually find a solution to a problem. In my case today, it's because there are very few ways to put art on walls and none is cost effectively or as fun as using a vertical printing machine or a floor printing machine to put artwork onto any wall, indoors, outdoors, any type of material. So that's where we are today. And that's basics of my background mm -hmm. without getting too deep into any of the prior experiences. If your audience wants to really know more about what I've done, they can always connect with me on LinkedIn. I always mm -hmm. enjoy connecting with people because ultimately businesses and life is all about the relationships you build. Yeah, 100%. And that is going to be linked in the description as well. And talking about solutions, what has been the biggest game changer for your business in the past year, you think? Well, uh, it started out where I likely wasn't the smartest kid on the block. When I started my uh -huh. business in uh, December of 2019, 
And mm -hmm. then, as everybody knows, in January of 2020, one month later, the world basically stopped with the COVID pandemic. Exactly. And so here I was, fully invested considerably of my family's mm -hmm. and my personal um, wealth in a product that nobody's ever seen or heard about before at a time when nobody was able to travel, where you couldn't go into people's homes or restaurants or schools, uh, which were closing down all over the place. Yeah. And, people, and so it, it wasn't easy to communicate this face-to-face um, -face where people could yeah. touch and feel what we were doing. You could use Facebook, and TikTok, and YouTube, yeah. and Instagram, and Pinterest to show people videos and images of what a wall printer is and what it does. Same thing mm -hmm. that anybody can see and learn by going to our website today. And so uh, so that's what we did for about a year before we got our first customer interested enough to purchase one of our machines without traveling to us. Um, and then okay. fast forward, as I was building up, I was using that as an opportunity. You know, they say when you have lemons, you try to make lemonade. Um, so in this case, what I did by hiring all these people, we learned how to use these products. We made sure that we had all the supporting materials developed for educating people and yep. training and all the things that any successful business needs to have to support its customers properly. So we did all that for eight to 10 months before getting our first customer and servicing our first market. And so, uh, but here we are three years later with 160 customers, new businesses being created. We're very proud of that and uh, mm -hmm. moving forward. That's amazing. Sounds good. So in that journey, yeah, what is the one mistake you made early on that you learned the valuable lesson from? Uh, one mistake. Uh, hmm. I, I don't mean this to sound pretentious by any means, but in this particular journey, um, I have made no mistakes. And now that could be because I'm mm -hmm. 72 and I have a lot of experience and I know mm -hmm. those yeah. roadblocks. But to, exactly. your point, to your point, in the past, um, selecting the wrong partners um, was my okay. biggest mistake. I, I really enjoy partnerships. Uh, I like, mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'm smart enough to know what I don't know. And so in many of my businesses, I always sought out whether it be just the advice or actually the inclusion of somebody in my venture. Um, to be a, an equity participant who could bring something to the table. Every day people are saying, you know, does my business need money? Um, a lot of companies are out there asking people, do you want to take a loan out? Do you want to borrow money? Things like that. Yeah. And money money is, is a tool. And yes, it's important. You, you do need to have you yeah. know, a proper capitalization to pretty much do any kind of business. Or exactly. Any kind of solution. But mm -hmm. money by itself isn't going to guarantee success. Um, there's, you know, sometimes even guarantees failure when you don't know how to use the money. But partnerships yes. are what I've always enjoyed um, finding. And when they're good partnerships, they can help a company grow because uh, even though I've got a degree in mathematics uh, from my education, college education, the best yeah. equation I like is two plus two equals five. And so what I mean by that is that the, the sum of the parts sometimes is greater um, than you know, the whole is greater than the, the sum of its parts. Meaning that when you have two heads that have come at something from different perspectives and you put those minds together and those skills together, you can grow something really special. Now, if that partner is not the right partner and has a different agenda than you do, and you're not on the same page, that to me is the single biggest mistake. And that has happened to me in the past. When right. I, yeah. I started a, a company and somebody that was invested with me and um, and they had mm -hmm. different goals and motivations than I did, and they could yeah. not contribute in the way that I had expected them to. So that's mm -hmm. that's the biggest uh, um, headache and obstacle that I've had in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, that's 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 funny because I I deal with many partners in my in my case. So well, what's your number one red flag in a partner that you can say after that? You know what? I cannot work with you because of that well, well no i guess first and foremost um if they don't want to listen to what the customers or the employees or me um want and are looking to get out of the product or service that you are delivering or developing um okay. they can't put themselves anybody who can't put themselves in the shoes 
and and understand what motivates somebody to want to do business with you that to me is a deal breaker um it is important to me though to want to understand what our customers want because that not only shows that you care about their success but it also says that you might be smart enough to know when you're not meeting those objectives and accomplishing their goals and you may need to pivot or do something different with your business plan it is very important to be flexible and be willing to pivot when the market or your customers tell you that you're going in the wrong direction so to mm. me not being able to react to that not being able to empathize um with that and being open to that that you think you know everything that's a mm. deal breaker for me mhm mm sounds fair enough so what is let's say one piece of advice you would give to your younger self starting out as an entrepreneur well somebody somebody very close to me who was an advisor in my early professional career um, okay. as a birthday present gave me a book very small book very easy to read you could read it one day um yeah. it's called everything i need to know i learned in kindergarten um and and i believe uh i apologize for not knowing and having a total familiarity with the british um education system in the uk uh, it's fine we have here we have kindergarten when you're about 4 or 5 years old you start off your yeah. education in your school in kindergarten and you learn things like how to play nice with others to take a nap every day um to uh treat people respectfully and do unto yeah. others as we do unto you um those are the lessons of life and those are the lessons of business as well and so uh if i was going to if i was going to give somebody advice and i really try to advise people um on, on what they should do um i like people who are self-reliant to kind of figure it out for themselves uh, but if anybody asked me that's the only thing i would tell them um and everything else should fall into place um mm. when you deal with business if somebody is really looking to invest in a business or create a business what i will tell them first and foremost is what make sure you have what i call the three t's uh time talent and treasure okay. have the time have the time to devote to what you think is going to be the successful venture or creation that you've got in mind um mm -hmm. have the talent if you don't have the talent make sure you partner or solicit or engage yeah. that talent from others who can help you get from here to there and then the treasure make sure you have the proper financing to accomplish what you want to do and that doesn't mean yeah. just look just look at the cost of employees or development or the rent of an office but you have to feed your family you have to feel good about yourself and about the business opportunity every day when you wake up and if you have those kinds of financial pressures that many if not most businesses have especially in the early stages um you could be in for a very long hard road before you yeah. have your head above water so to speak so understanding time talent and treasure um is the advice that i would give to people as they start their business journey mhm mm sounds good and back to your back to what you do what is the one question you get asked most often about your business hmm. uh the one question most of well i guess since we're putting people in business um they all want to know how do i make money with your product um that's probably the the number one question well maybe the number okay. one question is what is it what does it cost to get involved in this business they see it on yes. instagram or tiktok or youtube and they get all excited about it a lot of people don't realize that what we sell is not a 100 desktop printer uh from Hewlett Packard or Canon or Epson or something like that it is yeah. a, it is a commercial printing machine that costs $35,000 um and so so after they learn what the cost is which is probably the first question people ask my response to that is always who cares what the cost of something is how how about asking how much can i make with that investment yeah um, the cost of money is important what's my return on investment what do i have to do to be successful these are the questions that people looking for any kind of a business should be asking yeah you know, is this something i would enjoy doing first and foremost how do i make money doing it what does it cost to become involved with it how much mm -hmm. can i make i see so if we look at specific specifically at the question how can they make money with 
such example, what would you say? Well, be, be prepared um, to be the first kid on the block, so to speak, because okay. you're, going, you're going to probably be the first one in your community to introduce this. It requires marketing on one side. It requires maintenance of the machines on the other. Yeah. These are commercial printing machines. You have to be prepared for that. No different than, you know, somebody who has to change the oil in their car or change the yeah. windshield wipers every now and then. These are machines that have inks running through them and they require regular maintenance. You have to be prepared. If you don't want to do that yourself, you have to hire somebody to do it. You must treat a, this like a business. Sure, it looks like an exciting tool, but it is not something for just one person to think that they can do by themselves. Sure, one person can use the machine and print beautiful art on walls, but if you're yeah. going to be doing that all day long, where are your customers coming from? You have to still have a business to manage. You have to, a business still requires other aspects to it. Um, you have to, uh, you know, you have to have a vehicle, you have to, uh, pay insurance you have to uh, have uh, yeah. uh, you know all the other all the normal expenses of a business and the other and operating it, bookkeeping um, payroll um, whether it's just you or anybody else these are just there are activities that you need to do pretty much all day long when you mm -hmm. have a business and so you have to be freed up to do that you can't always be sitting there with a machine and actually our machines only require a babysitter uh, to yeah. be with those machines while they're printing doesn't require technical expertise. It doesn't require a lot of experience, uh, but it's time. It's the time to be with that machine while it's printed. Our printers print at 20 square feet per hour. Um, this image behind me, if, I don't know if you have video on this call or is it just audio? Yeah, it, it's his so, video. So there's a picture behind me that's a wall printing on a concrete wall, which is my warehouse here. That's made of cinder block. You can actually see all the rough textures in the in a cinder block here yeah. you don't need a smooth wall you just need a flat wall so again understanding that using this printer requires setting it up printing it taking the time this is a 40 square foot five feet by eight feet um 40 yeah. square feet four square meters for those in your audience on the metric system um and so uh, th this this takes two hours to print it would take an artist two days and they would never get the kind of clarity and resolution that this print provides um, in two days worth of painting. Um, mm -hmm. So two hours, this can be printed. We we believe that we are helping artists and muralists by letting them do what they do best, create art, and then our print is printed. But once again, somebody getting into this business has to know that you have to find the art, you have to find the customers, you have to yeah. give them what they want, and then you have to assess the wall, you have to figure out you know what the wall needs. If this wall was was rough concrete it's primered with white paint first before we print it if you don't do that that's something that you have to get a painter to do uh before mm -hmm. you do it so there's a lot of not only other ways to make money in this business with the graphic side of things and preparation side of things uh which is ways you can make money with partner with people but it's also time and there's things to be considered yeah. so once again it's, it, you need at least two people to, to run this business and of course my business we don't provide the services we provide the machines so yeah. i don't want somebody to just think that they can do this by themselves because my business is selling machines and inks and making sure those machines work for my customers perfectly day in and day out with the support that we give and so the training that we give uh, so i want people to buy more machines if it's yeah. there's one person using this machine well that doesn't help me after the first sale and I never believe that any business should just look at the, the sale of a product. You know, if you sell somebody a car or you sell them a software application, you know, you want to upgrade it. You want to sell them other things that you own or you want to find yeah. out what it is they want. So you can, because now you've got a relationship with them. And ultimately, as I said earlier, that's what life is about. You create a relationship with somebody and now they will use you as a trusted resource. There's more often, more times than not, in terms of, um, I'm sending people to some other product or some other service um, or, or buy something other than what I'm selling uh, because they trust me at that point to go ahead and exactly. make it. Yeah. And if I cannot deliver it in the long run, I will have a better customer and I will earn more loyalty and more financial rewards by sending some, by not selling something sometimes than actually selling something. And so, Again, yeah, that's that's what this is all about. That's 
what people should have their eyes wide open when they get into this business. Mm -hmm. If they're looking to grow, if they're not looking just simply for a five figure income, but they're looking to have a real business that's going to grow, they should have a mindset that they're going to own a business that they're going to hire people to do the job. Look, nobody, nobody Perfect. invested, nobody invested in a Kentucky fried chicken or a Starbucks because they love coffee or they like making hamburgers or chicken. Okay, that's not why you buy those types of businesses. You know, you buy it because either the real estate or you buy it because it makes money. Um, and, and you're not, exactly. you know, I was an investor on business. Um, yeah, I learned how to cook and I tended bar and I washed dishes because I wanted to know what was involved. But that's not why I got into the restaurant business. Uh, my business, yeah. I, I wanted to manage it. I wanted to meet the people, understand what our customers wanted. Um, I went, I didn't want to be in a kitchen. I hired somebody to do that. Um, I hired somebody to wash dishes and to tend bar and to be a waiter. Now, sure, I could do it, but I was trying to do everything. The business would never grow because you'd never exactly. get customers. Hundred percent. Okay, so let's we have we have a bonus section as well where I'll say one word or a phrase and you must reply with the first thought that comes to your mind. Make sense? <laughs> Well, it makes a lot of pressure, but yes, it makes sense. <laughs> I know it's, you know, it can be controversial, but you will have the time at the end to, you know, explain yourself. <laughs> okay. So first one, entrepreneurs. Risk taker. Mm -hmm. Startup businesses. I'm sorry, say that again. Startup businesses. What is the solution to what problem? Mm -hmm. Photography. Again, please. Photography. Photography. Mm -hmm. All right. High energy people. Try to keep up with them. <laughs> Low energy people. Try to make them high energy people. Mm -hmm. An inspiring mentor. Listen. That's a nice one. Why listen? Why listen? Mm -hmm. If you're going to be inspired, you know, you have to listen to what it is they do and what it is they think you should be doing and, and yeah. then evaluate that for the purpose of of their mentorship or why you think you need a mentor. Exactly. That's that's inspiring itself. So any last words from Paul Barron before we close the pod? <laughs> last words. No, just if uh, you know if anybody, as I said earlier, um, I'm always happy to connect. I appreciate this opportunity and to this talk to you and your audience. Um, I hope there was something of benefit to somebody. And if, if anybody wants to connect with me, I don't like these podcast and I do a lot of them on entrepreneurship and sales and marketing um, yeah. but I don't I don't want them to sound like an advertisement for my business um, yeah I'm, I do a lot of work with the local university and give back I'm, I am myself a mentor in what's called the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship here in yeah. North Carolina which is an incubator of sorts for startups and people who have some type of pain point in their business and they look for advice from others there are people like me who wear the sales and marketing hats, business development, others that are financial, some are legal. Um, you know, seeking out advice is very important. And so um, I'm always happy to connect with people. I hope that's the takeaway from this is that if somebody is going out on your own journey, um, mm -hmm. you know, sure, if somebody, if somebody really likes the wall printer and the idea of being in business with that, I, I welcome a visit to our website, thewallprinter.com, and yeah. you know, learning more about this. But if they just want to connect with me, I'm even more happy to do that. LinkedIn is the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It was a pleasure having you. Lots of free, valuable information. And that was Paul Barron, ladies and gentlemen. Antonis, thank you. Good night.